Okay. Yeah, so. Crazy. All right. So, uh, you can mute. Please mute for the sake of the chicken. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we continue. So, we continue reading. Still, she said that she wanted him to promise to change, to try harder and commit to the compulsory prayers. Remember, she's really insisting eh, that they have compulsory prayers. She was intent on influencing him but he was shy of the intimacy converse, conversations about faith and practice evoked. After all, they did not know each other well, and these were heady days of physical discovery. The smallness of the room making them bump and rub against each other. So even the place where they are, there's little space. And, and it, 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 in life, normally when the people are near each other and the space is little, or they feel like their natural space is being invaded, there tend to be some kind of uh, quarrelsomeness or, or people become very irritable. So this is not really unnatural, okay? Yes, Sumeya, say something. Sumeya's hand is up, welcome. <laughs> okay, I continue. He was naturally the first man in her life and she was swayed between discomfort and pleasure between lack of sleep and the feeling that all her girlhood and all her beauty had led to this. So she's confident even in herself. She knows that she's beautiful. A honeymoon in London. Her wedding henna was still bright on her palms and feet. Majdi was, he had to admit to himself, captivated by the comforts and the delights she offered. So slowly by slowly, Majdi, Majdi is accepting her presence and is starting to enjoy her presence in his life. He's charmed by her looks and her laughter. Uh, then, uh, Sumaya, please mute. Then she would spoil it all by take, talking about religion, by reminding him that without these five daily contacts, one was likely to drift off without protection or grace or guidance. Was he not a believer? Yes, in a half-hearted way he was, but he was also lazy and disinterested. Look at how modernity is starting to change him. Here in London, Magdi argued, prayed, praying was a distraction, an interruption. And most of all, because of the changing times that followed the movement of the sun, rather than the hands of the clock, praying was inconvenient. Don't talk to me about this again, he finally said, drawing her towards him. Don't nag. So from this page, we can conclude that Modernity is a theme that comes out. Number two, there is change. We can see Majdi changing from his belief, his religious beliefs, even his wondering in these rhetorical questions whether he is not a believer or not. But from where his family and the background he came from, we know he was a believer. Remember when his results came after he did his uh, form four, uh, is it from for all level exams? Okay, they were celebrating and you can see the religious element. So the change is taking place slowly and slowly in him. The other change that is also taking place is that the Samra who did not captivate him those days when he saw her demonstrating, the book now says he is now he's starting to get used to her comforts and the delights. And of course he's charmed by her look. So look at the change in two levels. His attitude towards uh, the girl, Samra, his wife, and his attitude towards religion. And religion, of course, is a, another theme. Then we can see that Samra is religious, insisting that they must talk about her faith. Prayers are compulsory, and she is determined. The book says she was intent on influencing him. That means that she is determined. So when you are writing and picking your evidence, those are what you are looking for. Those words, you pick that as your illustration and then you say it in your own words. 
And then we see Majdi is becoming irreligious. Opposite of being religious is irreligious. We don't say not religious. Remember, we don't use the word not. He's argumentative. And when he tells her, don't talk to me about this again. He's arguing. Even the book also says here in London, Majdi argued. So you find the word argue right in the book itself. So when you're looking for character traits, sometimes just look at what is presented before you in the text. You don't need to go far. There are times you'll need to interpret, but there are times the words are just there before you. And then he is tactful. And the tactfulness comes in the next uh, the next slide. Uh, no, when, when he realized that he had uh, told her not to nag, remember he draws her close to him because he realized he had hurt her. I think we had met that even before. Okay, by drawing her close to him, he's, he's like, uh, yes, Naomi? Uh, I'm asking uh -huh. if you have just that uh, Majdi is argumentative. Yes, he Something is. Like that. Yes, oh. he's oh. argumentative. And check that one, two, three, four. The fourth last line, the book also says, Majdi argued. And he argued that praying was a distraction, an interruption showing how he's becoming a religious. I think you can put your yeah. hand down. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sumaya is in. Sumaya, would you like to read the next paragraph? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. In the days to come, when he became engrossed in his work again, he sensed her by his side, sympathetic, aware of his moods, sensitive to his needs, gentle and generous. Then she will move away to splash in the bathroom and come out to pray. She held the, up, the, the day up with pegs. Five prayers, five pegs. The movement of the sun was marked. The day was, the day was mapped and Majdi felt his life become more structured. He stayed more blessed. In their cramped room, Samra's room must took up a large portion of the floor. The old top she covered herself with dropped of, drooped over it in a cold heap. Sometimes she re, she re, she reproached with a look of with a look or a word. So, sometimes she looked sad and worried on his behalf, but she continued to follow her own course, her own obligations, keen to preserve this practice even though she was away from home. Thank you. Look at that. Good reading. Thank you. Keen to preserve this practice, not the use of such words. And that now leads us again to the themes that I've noted some there. And again, this is a lesson. So if I've left out a theme and you can see it clearly, you can add it. Religion. Religion is coming out very, very strongly. There is also the issue of family. Family. Now they are together, living together as a family and influencing each other. Majdi, on the other hand, they, they are saying that uh, she is becoming more blessed. So look at how the change is taking place. She is changing his life slowly by slowly. And the, the movement of the sun was marked. The day was marked. And his life was now structured. His time becoming more blessed. Look at the change that she's bringing into his life. And then we are told, there is, so look at the determination, the determination from Samra. So when I look at Samra's way of doing things, even a lesson to us, I see a lot of wisdom. The book says she was sensitive to his, aware of his moods, moods, sympathetic, sensitive to his needs, gentle and generous. And she knew she wanted to impact him with her change. She is not quarrelsome. You see a lot of wisdom in the way she is behaving. And that brings her out as being wise. We are picking that as a character trait. And her wanting to preserve this practice also brings out the theme of tradition. The theme of tradition. Now, Samra is sympathetic. We've seen that. The book says that. She is gentle. That is clearly given. And she is generous. So again, when you're quoting this in as you answer questions or as you are writing or as you're discussing, you'll simply say the author tells us that she is sympathetic, she is sensitive, 
she's gentle and she's generous. And these are adjectives. She's also prayerful. Five times a day, she now made prayer regular, irrespective of, of, um, of some, some Majdi's argument that the sun has changed the time. She just made sure that the times were regular. She is undeterred. Undeterred is the other way, the, the, other, the other word for being determined. She is keen, very keen, making sure that things are done at the right time and her being sensitive to his needs, aware of his moods, also shows us that she's keen, she's observant, she's perceptive, very many character traits. She is uh, critical. Uh, she's critical where we are told she would reproach with a look or a word. Uh, and sometimes she looked sad and worried on his behalf. She's, she's wondering, why is he not coming into this aspect of prayer with me? So the fact that she's able to see that, to note those everything she's noting means that she's critical. She has a critical eye. And of course, she's concerned. That's why she is worried. On the other hand, Majdi is uh, appreciative. The fact that he found that his time was more blessed. He's actually appreciating the routine that she's bringing into his life. And of course, he's observant because now he can see that his life is more structured. The, 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 the things that are, the, the, um, he can actually see in the room that was the, the, the prayer mat now takes almost every part of that room. So you can see how the change is coming in. And that leads us to then the um, up here we have. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Repetition. We have vivid description. Any other comment as I move on to the next slide? Or we move on? Hello, are you there? Yes, shall we move on? All right. Naomi, do you want to read for us this page? Okay. Okay, go ahead. So... He wanted her to enjoy live, lively, lively. Uh, civilized, mm -hmm. lively, civilized London. He mm -hmm. wanted her to be grateful to him for excuse, uh, re rescuing him from the ba backwards of Khartoum. <clears throat> he thought that that like him, should she would find it difficult at first and had settled down, but the opposite happened. During the first month, she showed the enthusiastic approval of the tourists and enjoyed looking at the shops, was thrilled uh, at how easy all the housework work was. She could buy meat already cut up for her. There were all these biscuits and sweets to choose from and they were not expensive at all. Even the, the pharmacy, even the pharmacy was stocked so full of medicine in so many different colors and flavors that almost longed it to be ill. You almost Every, longed it to be uh, ill. Oh, <laughs> longed it to be, yeah. Every object was such, was perfect quality, radiate, radiate from every little thing. The color of the hairpins did not clip under her nails like it had always done. Chewing gums was not the brittle stick that often dissolved in her mouth at the first bite. Empty jam, jam jars were a thing of beauty. She would wash them and dry them and not be able to throw them away. Biscuits, tins, those who wanted to collect and to take back home. Her mother would see them to store flour or sugar or put her own baked cakes in them and send tin proudly, a tin proudly to the neighbor and days later, the neighbor would return the tins with her own gift inside. I continue. Uh, just finish. Okay. She put she put on weight. She wrote happy letters home. Majdi showed her the university's library. So many floors that were 
that there were lifts inside and even toilets. They tore the shining computer rooms and she was impressed. She made him feel that he was brilliant, which was, which was, which mm -hmm. deep down he knew he was, he was all along. Uh -huh. um, Just stop there. Just stop there. Thank you for the reading. Okay. Now you look at what is happening. Why I was smiling is when my, when Samra is excited at enjoying the shops and seeing how homework, housework is easy as compared to when she was in Khartoum. Khartoum, sorry. She found that she can buy meat that is already cut. And like back home where she had to buy the meat and then cut it. And then she realized there were a variety of biscuits and sweets and they were not even expensive like back home. She finds that medicine is so available in many colors and flavors that she almost longed to be healed. That bring, comes out like an aspect of humor. Like you're seeing, you're so shocked. There's so much good medicine that you're like, I wish I was ill. Because back home when somebody was ill, there was no medication. And every object she touched in London was quality. Everything is radiating. You know, she's so excited. Even, even the hairpins that she had did not chip under her nails like it had always done. The hair hairpins that she was using to, to, to hold her hair, their quality. The chewing gum that she bought in London was not dissolving in the mouth at the first bite, like maybe the ones at home. You could chew and chew, like I see most of us chew. For five hours, we are still chewing the same the same uh, uh, chewing gum. So she's feeling like, wow, things here are so different. You know, unlike at home, where you would use a, a, a jam, a jam jar, and then you throw it away because it's not helping anybody, or you take it to a neighbor, of course, we'll bring it back with things. Here, they are so beautiful that she would wash them uh, they would be washed and then they'd, they'd be kept, you know. I mean, things are just exciting in this London. Look at how uh, it looks like some change is taking place in her. But the question I want us to think about, is that change really taking place in her? Or she's just excited like an, a, 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 a tourist? Like you see, like when tourists come to Kenya, they are excited. You and I, when you see, um, I don't know what, what animal you've seen of late. Or when, like when we are traveling, going home. The other day I was traveling and we could see some zebras and we're just like, oh, those are zebras. You know, like, oh, that's nice. That's a zebra. But when a tourist come or when we first see them, we want to stop the car. We want to take a photo. So she's behaving just like a tourist would behave in a new nation or a new place. Or you and I would behave when we go to a new place. But after a while, does it still happen? But now what made me laugh is that when she was doing all this, getting so happy, Telling Majdi, I want to see that 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 uh, university library. She's writing many letters back at home with excitement. She's she's helping him. He's he's helping her tour the computer rooms and impressed. And then <laughs> he feels brilliant. You know, ego, eh? Like, hey, 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 hey. I am I'm the one. Yeah, I'm making this lady feel so nice. And then it says, which deep down he knew all along. That brings out his being prideful, prideful, eh? So let me continue because there's something still we'll handle on this. Now, how did Samra show the enthusiastic approval of the tourism? Name 10 things. Now, we are three. Can each one of us just turn on your, 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 um, your, what, turn on your, uh, not video, sound, audio, and name one of those things that we have just talked about, which shows that she was excited. I've just mentioned them, but just to recap. There are 10 of them. Can we try and rename them? Who goes first? Sumaya? So the first thing she wasn't, okay, she was enthusiastic about, it was about the buying meat that was already cut up for her. Mm -hmm. this, okay, there were biscuits and sweets for, like, that were not expensive and of different kinds. Mm -hmm. The pharmacy that was full of full stock of medicine that mm -hmm. on that of different colors and flavor made mm -hmm. her to feel like she wants to be ill. Mm -hmm. And all the objects that she was touching, they were perfect and quality radiated from every little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the hairpins were colorful mm -hmm. and could chip under her nails. Could not chip, eh? Mm -hmm. Sorry, chip under her nails. The other thing, the chewing, the chewing gum that was not 
easily dissolve once she put it in, into her mouth. Yeah. Ready five, I'm giving. Thank you. For <laughs> now, me give us the ones you, that she has left out. She has left out the jazz uh, mm -hmm. that they were so beautiful, mm -hmm. and that the skits and the, mm -hmm. the biscuits they were so cheap. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the university, mm -hmm. they had toilets and lifts. Mm -hmm. and else. Very good rec recalling of what we have learned. So I hope that yeah. will stay in our minds. And especially as we think of this, I just want us to think how we probably, not, not the three of us, maybe, but how when we are used to things, we take them for granted. Why to other people, those are things that they appreciate have you ever taken time to think that a chewing gum, gum would make a difference that whereas we can have chewing gum that we can <laughs> do forever for somebody else having a chewing gum that does not dissolve is something exciting all right we move on so these are all the things that you've talked about enjoyed looking at the shops was thrilled at how easy all the homework was she could buy meat there were biscuits to choose on pharmacies talked good medicine in fact, she longed to be ill. That one now, to me, I find it very humorous. And everything is perfect. Even the hairpins. Remember when they were running during the riot and the hairpin came and she used to, she had to use her, her teeth to remove it. It seems like they would chip. When she touches them like this under her nails, the color comes out. And, and all that that we have mentioned. Here they still are, the empty jars, the beautiful biscuit tins. And she put on weight. Oh, we forgot about that one. She put on weight. Because now there's so much, she looks contented, and she wrote happy letters home. And I pray if we have another lesson, we'll probably revise how to write a letter, and we'll also do telephone etiquette. So that as we use this story to revise, we also revise other aspects that are practical. Because remember, we are doing what is called integrated, integrated syllabus. Okay, and, and toilets. Getting impressed that there are lifts and toilets, meaning... Back home, you never know. I know in some parts, in uh, maybe parts of our country, now things have improved a little bit. But there's a time they used to have what is called flying toilets. Does any of you know what flying toilets are? Yes, my stories. <laughs> yes, through stories. Flying toilets. You do your thing, then you put in a paper bag, and then you throw it. So I do not know how then Sudan was. But now she has toilets that somebody can just walk in. And of course, that all makes this gentleman feels good. He's achieving something. Okay, let me read the next page. We are doing well. Then the day shortened. Now look at this Majdi. page. Yes, say something. Excuse me. Sumaya, so you're Can we say that? Uh -huh. Yes. So can we say that Majdi is optimistic? Like she takes everything like it's nice for her, even maybe to oh, so not to Majdi, Samra. Samra is optimistic that mm -hmm. she takes everything. And she has a good feeling of everything, despite like the chewing gum, which does not make sense. Uh -huh. like, <laughs> yes. She, she's looking at it like um, things are getting better. So we see optimism. But we have to be very careful because the next paragraph might tell us something a bit different. So when we look at her doing all this, probably we can talk of adventurous. She's adventurous, like a tourist, just finding new things and being excited. We can also probably add that she's appreciative. She recognizes those things. She, she's, she's expressive. She expresses her feelings, okay? Because now why I'm saying that, when we move to now this page, look at how after all that has been described to us, how now the change starts to take place. Okay? Then the day shortened, and I've marked them in red purposefully. Then the day shortened, became monotonous. She was like the holiday maker who was getting a little bit tired of her exotic surrounding, surroundings. Everything around her began to feel temporary, detached from normal life. Do you remember the title, Missing Out? 
This happened when Magdi began to talk of getting a work permit once his student visa expired, of not going back after he got his PhD. You see where now the change starts taking place. It was the continuity that she found most alien. And I want to explain here, in her country, things would change. Things would change. Sometimes they'd be perfect, perfection. Sometimes the weather would change. Sometimes, But here, everything seems to be, if it's perfect, it's just that perfect. And she found that alien. Alien here means strange. Not alien the way people normally think somebody from the moon. <laughs> Look at this. It rained and people lifted up umbrellas and went their way. Maybe in their home, when it rained, people had to stop because probably there are not many umbrellas. So there is change. But here, whether it rained, it didn't make a difference. The shelves in the supermarket would be empty and then they'd be filled again. Maybe back at home, you would notice like, eh, the shelves has been empty. Like right now, I don't know how many of you have gone shopping. But the last time I went to a supermarket and checked for, for maize flour, where I normally find maize flour laid very nicely, there was none. So I moved to the second shelf and the maize flour that was there is like the traditional one because they are not in the supermarket. So for us here, we are used to the supermarket being empty. And for a while you ask for this item, you don't find it. But there in London, you come, you find it's not there one minute, the next minute it is there. So for her life was now getting monotonous. The postman delivered the mail every day. And like at home, or sometimes when we used to deliver mail, you'd wait for mail and you find the postmaster didn't go or the mail delayed somewhere. So she got so tired of what, as far as Maggi was concerned, something she should have appreciated, a good life. What does that tell us about the human nature? That human nature, no matter how good or how bad something is, we get tired. It's like we are used to having, what do we call it? A variety of good and bad. And that is the kind of life she had got used to in Sudan. And so now she tells this, this uh, husband of hers, don't your, <laughs> don't your lecturers, lectures ever get cancelled? Does that sound familiar? Sometimes when we come to class, every day, every day, every day, every day, then a student somewhere will say, hey, teacher can't even miss for one day. I'm just trying to say, is, is, is that, that uh, the girl, she's not abnormal. She's probably like <laughs> some of us. But don't your lecturers ever get ill? Remember she wanted to get ill or she desired to get ill earlier? because medicine was available. But now all that she's finding so boring that she's wondering, don't your lecturers ever get ill? Don't their wives ever give birth? <laughs> what does she mean by that? That if their wives gave birth, they would go on paternity leave. They would give them space so that at least there's variety. Then look at this. When the queen dies, will they give everyone a holiday? This is a lot. Her, her rhetorical questions, bring out a lot of humor, but they also show us the suffering that she is going through. I repeat, her rhetorical questions bring out how desperate she is to have change so that at least they can go back home for a while. And they also bring out humor, like the queen dying. The same queen they're talking about is still the one on the throne today. So in other words, she's saying, hey, in this country, it is so difficult to get change because the queen will not even die soon. <laughs> so carefully note what Samra found hard to deal with. The aspect that in the perfect change she had found, that this change was now monotonous. And the fact that Maggie has said, I want to work in this country. Here is a question for Naomi and Sumeya. If you were Samra and you had moved from now the country we have described in Sudan to London, would you want to come back to your country? Let's have a response, two minutes. Oh, Who goes, okay. So Maya, you had unmuted. Yes. Tell me I don't think I would like to go back to Sudan. <laughs> Why? <laughs> We found a good life than 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 the life that you you hustle with it. Okay. So, you know, the, it's perfect. Like there's medication. Uh -huh. The way she describes how 
the way it was, uh -huh. the kids, the library, like education wise, uh -huh. social life, uh -huh. economic, it's all compared to Sudan. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. although my parents are in Sudan, yeah, I'll miss them, but at a point, I'll just prefer to have a good life. Then, deciding uh -huh. my parents, when I'm all stable at London, I uh -huh. said to take even my parents. And then two, so that both of us we have this <laughs> nice life. I like that. <laughs> hey, hold that thought, hold that thought, and remember that your mother, your mother may be much this mother. So hold that thought for a while. Yes, Naomi, <laughs> what's your take? Okay, according to me, I think that I will prefer staying, but uh, being on uh, Samara's side. Uh, she is a normal human being in that when as we have everything mm -hmm. we okay currently we are used in some struggles we have to struggle for us to get something so that's a life a normal life for us currently mm -hmm. but when you're provided with everything you'll just find that eh, kuna kashida mahali. so mm -hmm. like you won't be that comfortable because you're used to struggling mm. so like mm. it, it seemed to her she was used to a certain life of a lot of struggles not that she has everything she mm. feels like she's not normal mm. so i guess it's just it's just life i guess <laughs> i like that by the way yeah. what we are doing this this discussion that the three of us are having helps us develop our critical thinking skills the fact that you can look at a situation and out of the evidence given, you are able to make a judgment. And it's my prayer that even those who will listen to this will find that, that you know, literature is not just about reading about uh, Samra and Majdi and then you do an exam. No, but it gives us skills that we can also use for later. And I like that. So Sumaya, I was telling you, we may not discuss this because of time, <laughs> but I'm thinking if Majdi's mother was your mother. Do you think you can convince her to come back with you to London, knowing what we talked about her? <laughs> okay. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, so, Sumaya, read for us. She'll day on Sunday, you will say, laughing at her question. Just, just stop this there is... for a minute. Just hold there. Now, you see how he's... Uh, what, what character trait do we say? He's humorous, eh? He's humorous. Yes. In, other words, in other words, the queen will die on Sunday. So if she dies on Sunday, we still won't have a break on Monday. Okay? So note that use of humor as, a, as an aspect of style. Okay, go on. This is what civilization is. The security to build your life. To make something out of it, not to be hindered all the time by cops, by new laws, by sitting all day. By coup, sorry, by coup, coup, overthrowing of government. Mm -hmm. By coup and new laws, by mm -hmm. sitting all day in a petrol queue, mm -hmm. by not being able to get your ill, Ill child to a doctor because you're on the you're, you're on a strike. She listen, she listen, she listen careful carefully to everything he said will not will not in agreement though her eyes remain where wary. worry when mm -hmm. she spoke of the worry when the when she spoke of the future though she would imagine they were going back as if his hopes of staying in london were only dreams or as if his hopes were were an Im inevitability she wished to deny i imagine you're coming you I imagine you coming home early. She's, mm -hmm. She will say, there will not be this endlessly long working day like here. Uh -huh. Good. So you've seen, as far as Magdi is concerned, eh, civilization is when your life is secure. What Sumaya described, what Naomi you've described, everything is provided. That to him is civilization. And you're not hindered by coups. By the time they were saying this, in Africa we still have this, but in these days they are not that much. We used to have attempts by either the army or by a group of people to overthrow the current government and then make new laws. 
And you can do research on that because many countries in Africa were affected. In 1982 in Kenya, we almost have, we had an attempted coup to overthrow that government. And it is not fun. When that happens, people die. We lose things from the supermarket. The economy is affected. So when Magdi is actually speaking, he's recalling all those things that happen when governments are unstable. Or like, remember, was it sometime early this year? Because I remember I was traveling when we were on long break. There was no petrol. I hope you remember there was no petrol. So you could see long queues. But he's saying in London, we've not seen things like that. Well, you and I have to research and find out what's really happening because even them, they have their own issues. Or when your child is sick, we used to have a lot of doctors striking. Even here in Kenya, a lot of those strikes. I'm sure if you read newspapers, you'll see them. So she's listening carefully to what, what he's saying. And she would nod and say, yes, what you're saying is true. I agree with you. Remember, we said she's a very wise woman. She is, she is critical. She, she knows like what you're saying is true, but her eyes remain worry. Worry means cautious, cautious. I'm agreeing with you, but please, even if I'm agreeing with you, at least we need to go back home. That is what she's saying. At least we need to find time to go back home. And then she would say, now you can see what's happening. She says, I imagine you coming home early. Meaning with all this civilization at some point, people stop thinking about family. Family now becomes another story because you're busy working throughout. So look at now where she is leading her. She's listening to all the argument that he has given, which makes it nice for them to stay in London. Now let us turn to her argument for them to go back to Khartoum. That is a place that is, 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 would I say, pregnant with information that you need to catch. What are the, uh, his arguments for staying in London and what are arguments for going back home? And I think I would like to read them for us. Then maybe now we'll take the next reading. So she's imagining that number one, he'd come back home early. We've seen that in the previous slide. slide. Then we would sleep in the afternoon under the fan. <laughs> Whereas in London, the weather is cold at that particular time or it can adjust. But here, they are sleeping in the afternoon under the fan. Its blades are gray blur. The sun so hard and bright that would, be that would still be with us through the closed shutters. I would tease you about your students. So number one, that you'd come home early. Number two, that you would sleep in the afternoon under the sun. So let me just finish reading, okay? I would tease you about your students. Are the girls pretty? Do they come to your office after lectures and sweetly say, who stars? I can't understand this. I can't understand that. Who stars? Don't be so hard on us when you're marking our exams. Or did you laugh at me and shake your head and say, I'm talking rubbish, but I know your eye, from your eyes how much my possessiveness pleases you? The children playing on the roof would wake us up, their footsteps thudding over the hum of the fan. They are not allowed up there. It's not safe among the jagged green pieces of glass that ward of thieves. And you are furious with them. You go outside and throw your slippers at your son as he drops himself down from the tree one foot balanced on the windowsill. He is the eldest, the instigator, but he's mischievous and ducks. You miss him and have a shout, bring the sleeper back. From inside, I hear his laugh like cool tumbling water. You once brought a whip for this boy. You got it from the sock in, Ud that's so corny, eh? <laughs> in Udurman, where they sell good whips. And you are quite pleased with yourself that day. You lashed it through the air to frighten the children with its snake-like power. But you did not have much of a chance to use it because he took it and threw it on top of the neighbor's roof. And so it remained there among the fluffs of dust, razor blades and other things the wind carried to the roof. I would make tea with mint, but now the sun would have nearly set. It would be the hottest part of the day, no breeze, no movement, as if the whole world was holding its breath for the departure of the sun. Our neighbor comes over and you drink the tea together. He brings him the latest gossip, another political fiasco, and you're amused. Your good mood is restored. 
Your son behaves well in front of guests. He leaves his play, comes and shakes the man's hand. The sound of grief cuts the stillness, the stillness of the evening, like a groups of birds howling, suckling, and yapping with their throats. We guess it must be the elderly neighbor across the square. He has been in and out of hospital for some time. I grab my top and run, run in my slippers to mourn with them. Now that is the description and it continues. I wanted to finish all that description and then we can discuss. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Sure. Right. Yes? I'm floating. We are talking about... Yeah. We are talking about... And we, we I think... Let me see. Let me just... Uh, and then, uh, okay. What we are talking about, and I'll still take us a bit slowly then, is that Samra has been a little bit convinced that London is good. But now she's telling Majdi that the reason why we need to go back to cartoon number, cartoon number one is because when we go back, we will enjoy an afternoon sleep under the fun and we are seeing the sun. We are well, seeing the sun. Yes? Um, hmm. Somebody has come in. Can she mute? Thank you. Right? And then he's also telling her that I would be teasing you about your students. You know the way now Majdi is a man and he's teaching girls. So she's telling him that I would cheekily come and tell you, ah, I think the girls are in love with you. That's why they are, they're making excuses that uh, don't be so hard by giving us difficult exams. Uh, do, do you know, they come to his office after the lectures. I, I hope that that sounds familiar sometimes in some schools, but it is okay, it's not good. But she's making fun. She's trying to tell him, yeah, we'll have a nice time chatting when we're back in cartoon. At least I'll have time with you. The third thing is we'll have our children playing on the roof. Remember, they have just gotten married. They still don't have children. So she's moving fast forward the advantage of going back to Sudan. So the children will be playing uh, on the roof. And, and then as they come in, we, we feel, because the fun is up, we feel their feet above that. And then you would say, it's not safe for them to be there. That is now Majdi. She's imagining Majdi saying. And then you become very furious. You come out of the room and you throw your slipper. Remember, for us parents, especially in Africa, when a child has done something wrong, most times they used to throw anything, <laughs> anything that is near. So he throws the slipper at the slippers at the sun so that he gets down. While the sun is getting down from where he had gone, remember on the roof, he's coming and they are worried. Oh my, he's going to fall because he's balancing on the windowsill. And then that son of theirs, she's imagining he'll be mischievous. So as the father throws the slipper at him, he ducks. You see, it's all she's trying to make him see the humor of having a family, but back in cartoon. And then they would they would hear the son laughing and saying, daddy missed, daddy missed, daddy did not beat me. I'm being dramatic just to explain how Samra is thinking, if we went back to Sudan, life would be fun, my husband. And this is where now she'd say that Majdi, being a strict parent, had bought a whip, Nyaunyo, had bought a whip, eh? And, and it is so powerful that when you wipe a child with it, it's like snake-like power. That is an imagery, an imagery that has been used. So when you try to beat your son, you miss <laughs> and it falls. It falls on top of the neighbor's roof. And once it falls there, because nobody can reach there to get it out, it will gather dust like all the razor blades and other things that the wind has carried to the roof. So she's even thinking the weather in Sudan is so beautiful. We have the wind that is blowing then, apart from enjoying their family, she would also make him tea with mint. Hey, tea with mint is nice. It's refreshing. There's a lovely feeling around here. Even if you have some cold, she's trying to entice him. She's tactful so that they can go back to where? Khatoum. And then she says, by now the sun would have set to be the hottest part of the day. And then the neighbor would come over. That is number, I think number five. 
So it's about the children, it's about the fun they'd have together as him as a lecturer. Then the neighbor comes and then they catch up on the latest gossip, what's going on in the political arena. And he would be very happy discussing that. This is all Samra's imagination. And because Samra has imagined that they'll have brought up their son very well, he will behave well in front of the guests, come and shake the guest hands. I don't know about your homes, but I know that in my house, even up to today, when visitors come and the children are around, especially within the house, I insist that they greet the visitors. And maybe some of you wonder, why must they greet the visitors? You never know what the future holds. It's good to just train on good manners because they'll use it. And those on this call, I have seen your very, your, your girls who are full of good manners, very respectful. So she's imagining that they'll have taught their son good manners. But then towards the evening, a cry comes very loudly. The evening that was quiet, somebody just starts screaming. Remember in Africa, when somebody dies, people scream. So there, she's imagining maybe it's an elderly neighbor who had been sick in and out of hospital who has died. And then she does her good job as a neighbor. She grabs her top and runs to go and comfort them. Thus far, is it clear? Naomi? Very Thank you. Good. So now, <laughs> so now we'll just we'll we'll move on. So she's the, the whole idea there, and I hope you've got the things she's using to convince him so that they can go back to Khartoum, in spite of the fact that he had said Khartoum is full of civilization. She's saying, yes, it is civilized, but it's monotonous. There's not much fun for you and me as a family. And then what is Maggie's answer? Again, allow me to read it. Uh, we, are, we are doing well on time. Then look at what, after she's done all that, Sumaya, she has given all that good discussion. This is how Maji, Majdi reacts. He says, you are hallucinating woman. Yani in short, umechizi. <laughs> I don't know what you people say nowadays. What word do you use for hallucinating? Having strange thoughts. Yani umeruka kichwa. Yani mentally, Naomi, eh? Yani mentally, something is wrong with you, woman, eh? <laughs> you get. You are hallucinating woman. This was Majdi's answer. Oh, okay. He had proof, number one. I will never, with the salary the university pays its lecturers, be able to afford us a house or a flat of our own. So every argument that she gave, he's trying now to bring them down. Remember we had said that he's argumentative. Then he says, unless I steal or accept bribes, and there is not much opportunity for either in my kind of work, but there in teaching, it's very difficult to steal or accept bribes. Because for us to get bribes and to steal, we are stealing from Naomi, Sumer, and all the other people on call. <laughs> okay? We would probably live with our parents. My mother would get on your nerves sooner or later. Look at now, he's using his mother, and you and I know what the mother looks like, to convince Samra that we must stay in London. Because my mother, instead of saying, you know, my mother will treat you well. No, no, no. We must stay in London because my mother would get on your nerves in law issues. Eh? You will complain about her day and night and you'll be angry with me because you expect me to take your side and I don't. And it's logical. He's logical in an argument. Number two, how will I ever get to the soak in Ud -Ud -Ud -Dum -Ud Duman with no petrol? Remember, they are, she had talked, he had talked of queuing. And there is unlikely to be electricity for your fun. So the fun that you're saying we will be sitting under it in the afternoon enjoying, there's no electricity. The last thing, <laughs> why do you assume that nothing pleases me better than drinking tea and gossiping with a neighbor? This is exactly the kind of waste of time that I want to get away from. The whole atmosphere where so-called intellectuals spend their time arguing about politics. Every lecturer defined by his political beliefs every promotion depending on one's political inclination and not the amount of research he has done or the papers he has published. My colleagues will be imagining that it is their responsibility to run the country, debating every little thing that, from every angle, abstract angle. The British gave it up, packed and left without putting up a fight. And somehow 
the Sudanese carry this air of pride of belief that their large, crazy country will one day rise gracefully from its backwardness and yield something good. Ouch. Ouch. That is Majdi. That is what he's thinking of Sudan. But I'm not going back to Sudan. In spite of all those things you are telling me that look fun, I'm not going back. Number one, there is no electricity. So we'll not have fun. But the only thing he didn't talk about in this response is about his children. That is for us to think about. But he's thinking it's a waste of time. Yani, Samra, all those things you have said are a waste of time. I'm not going back. And to sit down and argue, like now on our televisions, eh? we are not dismissing them. They're helpful to some people. Every day we have political analysts telling us where the country is going. And as far as Mike is concerned, all those things they're talking about are not even making sense. That is why he's talking of an abstract angle. Abstract is something that you cannot touch. Remember abstract nouns. And he's saying the British left Sudan. And we are just simply sitting there feeling things will change. And there is nothing that we are doing. But look at this word. Crazy country. Believe that they are large, crazy country. That is the background is coming from. Can I hear one or two comments? From what do you think of Majdi's reaction? Uh, mm -hmm. I think he's mm -hmm. so pessimistic. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't see a future. Mm -hmm. He's not open to change. Mm -hmm. He thinks that the colonies or the brights, mm -hmm. the British, mm -hmm. are going to bring change to his country. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is to say he's so pessimistic. Yes, yes. Yes. And, and the fact that he's imagining living with his mother, mm -hmm. that gives us the the other view of how she he sees her mother. His mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That he's it, it sounds like he's he's afraid of his mother. Eh? Yes. <laughs> Remember when he was calling <laughs> and he was crying? He was crying. <laughs> Uh, his, 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 his view is negative. Yes, Sumaya? I guess I will... Uh, I'll join... Uh, I agree with Majdi's opinion. Uh -huh. That's me. Mm -hmm. So for all... Yeah, if... if okay. If Sudan, if Sudan was to change, just uh -huh. to change for... I guess maybe to, to him, mm -hmm. it has been almost centuries, maybe... Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe decade or rather centuries. So okay. maybe she thinks that okay, he, that if 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 it didn't change for like 10, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. even to this start and forth, still the culture continues. Mm -hmm. Like if they're in back, like them themselves, they have to agree. Like we have to change, yeah, we have to do, we have to do this and that. We have to change our culture, culture from sitting around there drinking tea, discussing what's not important in our life. Mm -hmm. So I guess she's got, she's right. Mm -hmm. If if I was much that too much, mm -hmm. I will I wouldn't accept to go back to Sudan. <laughs> the Sudan, Sudan wants to go. Like Africa is just to win Africa, even if you bring up. If you bring out a good idea, they won't, they'll never accept. They're used to their culture. So uh -huh. They have just to. Okay. Yes, now me. <laughs> uh -huh. I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, most of us, we want to go and study abroad. Uh -huh. uh, is it, according now, it's for the students in the college. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, when you want to go there, you want to go there and stay there and continue developing that country that you're in instead of going, getting the knowledge and coming and developing your country. But he is doing the same. He's not patriotic. Mm -hmm. He could have gone to London, gotten his PhD, mm -hmm. come back, mm -hmm. and start uh, developing his country. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> by yeah. the way, by the way, we have Maria. Maria Nyamari is on call and she's from Sudan. Maria, yes. what do you think? <laughs> Maria, is she in a position to talk? Uh, 
Sumea, kindly check the chats. If there's something I need to know, you let me know. I don't want to interfere with this screen. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking as we are talking here, Maria has tested both. I think she's been in Sudan, if I'm not sure. And then now she's living in Kenya. So Maria, if you're not able to talk right now, by the end, help us understand. Eh? <laughs> what do you think? Should we go back to our countries that are backward after we get education or it's too big for us? That's a question we will discuss. Sumaya, yes? What's on the chat? There's nothing. Oh, I could see like there are two chats. That's fine. Let me move on. We are on slide 36 out of 49. All right, now this is what I feared. Anytime I check the chats, I have to stop sharing so that I can share again. <laughs> Uh, I hope it will not be an... Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, just a minute, sorry. Uh -huh. All right, so, uh, so sometimes she argued, uh, is there something missing? Oh, Sam, Samra's reaction, Samra now reacts. So she sometimes argued back when he spoke like that. Again, not systematically not how she's responding to that argument we've just talked about. She accused him of disloyalty a lack of feeling, just the way we've also spoken right now. Sometimes she'd be silent for days, control herself and not mention either the future or the past. No, that means she, that she has self-control. Then like one breaking a fast, she would speak, offer him memories and stories and wait for him to take them. Wait for the same patient with, with the same patience, the same serene insistence with which the little girls at the central police post off had offered pins and gums to his mother. <laughs> this is, I find this very interesting because they are trying now to, to tell us that there's a way in which this gentleman called Majdi is like his mother, like his own mother, determined, and you actually see his determination. So incidentally, or interestingly, some, some, Samra, seems to note that, and so she's being compared. The situation is being compared. How those little girls with pins were persistent and persistent. That is the same way that she's persisting when she's talking to her husband, Majdi. But remember that she is wise. She can, she can observe times. There are times she says, let me wait. There are times she starts stories. So I want us to note her character traits as being brought out. Then she says, I'm not making this up, she said one night as they walked on the side street, slick with rain and yellow lamplight. This really happened. After your mother, now look at what he's using to convince him to go back. After your mother found you at the central police post, she stood for an hour waiting for a bus or a taxi. None came. Transport was bad that day because of the petrol shortage. The sun burned her head and she became exhausted from standing. So she walked in the middle of the road, stood right in the middle of the road and raised her hand, palm upwards. She stopped the first car, opened the front door and got in. <laughs> the mother stopped the first car, opened the front door and got in. My son, she said to the driver, I'm fed up of waiting for transport and I can't move another step for Allah's sake. Drive me home. I'll show you the way. And he did drive her home, even though he wasn't on his way. And as they chatted, he called her aunt. He's trying to prove to her how tactful his own mother is. Look at how, and she must have been standing somewhere observing Majdi's mother on that particular day. These are details that we had not been told before. I don't remember reading it before. Maybe it was, but I don't remember. Look at that vivid description. 
this vivid description, she's trying to win Majdi's heart so that he can start thinking of going home. Think of your own mother. Imagine the day she called you. She had spent three days to call you. And when she calls you, there's no, there's no way of going back home. She's now appealing to him as a son. Very, very, very clever. Samra is very, very clever. Remember, she was educated. Remember, she was rioting with the university students. So she has some very high level of education. Maybe this is about girl child liberation. Now, and in July, rain that made silver puddles. The sun disappearing for a day, the new smell of the earth, and there would be no work that day, no school, the car stranded islands in the flooded streets. She's still saying, please, at least our country is beautiful. Our country is beautiful. And even when nothing is going on, we can still rest, okay? Still trying to convince him. Now I move on. Because uh, sure. he responds, yes, go on. I go, I go back. Uh -huh. Sure. Yes. So can we say that Majdi, oh no, sorry, Samra mm -hmm. is trying to explain to Majdi oh, to, that uh, the, their country, people are more friendly, like they have good, they are hospitable, rather generous. In a way, like my, some, Majdi's mother wasn't able to get a car, but she, when she stood at the center of the road, she waved, she raised up her hand and lifted and someone and she was able to enter at someone's quality she, the mother uh, much this mother didn't know that the person but the person was the was generous to much this mother took her in okay took her to her home okay like i guess she's saying to compare maybe life in london i mean it could be couldn't be that way very true very right so She's trying to build, and thank you for bringing that aspect. She's trying to build the fact, apart from telling us about the mother, that back in Sudan, back in Khartoum, people are hospitable. People are hospitable. Remember, when during the time when she was behaving like a tourist, eh, we are not told how she related to people. It was about objects. It was the objects that she was admiring. But when civilization, and I think that happens, when people become so modernized, they lose the human touch. And so she's trying to argue out that we may not have good roads. That's, we may not, there are days we may not go to school because maybe it has rained and things like that. But imagine what? People still have humanity. So that is a very good point that you have brought out. Very good. Her arguments are bringing out a lot of wisdom. Okay. Then his response. Then he says, because there are no proper gutters. For, so for her, you should enjoy when cars are stranded because, <laughs> because the rain has rained. But he was like, no, because there are no proper gutters, you tell us. No he would tell her, no drainage system and all those potholes. Remember the stink of the stagnant waters later. Remember the mosquitoes that would descend spreading disease. He's still trying to say, I am not going to Sudan, young girl. Silver paddles, she would say, under a sky strange with blue clouds. In other words, even when it has rained and there are potholes, they still have beauty to it. Her pessimism, her optimism, she's so optimistic. And she wants to look at her country like, what you are seeing as bad, somebody else can look at it and see it as good. And Majdi, I still want to go back to her too. I'm missing my home. Okay, another memory. She offered it like a flower pressed into his hand. Look at that use of, of, um, of imagery. She offered it like a flower. When you press a flower into somebody's hand, you do it gently so that the flower is not destroyed, okay? On the week before the wedding, they went to visit his uncle. And look at the way he's using his people to talk to him. Not even her uncle, his uncle. The electricity cut and the air cooler roared into power. Its fan flapped and then all of a sudden died down. The sudden darkness, the sudden silence, they sat and the electricity is gone. The, the, it's now very hot. Now look at what she's looking at it, how she's looking at it. One, they listened to the gentle drip drop sound of the water on the air cooler's fresh straw. <laughs> that why it's positive. They opened the window to let in the faint night air and the scent from the jasmine bushes. Number three, 
Moonlight filled the room with blue gray shadows, beauty. Number four, outlines rows of the colored sweets on the table. And number five, the eyes melting in their glasses of lemon juice. This, these are now the, the glass melting, you know, the beauty. And she's talking about the beauty of electricity that has gone. While their host stumbled around in search of candles and light, Magdi had leaned over and kissed her for the first time. She is using all the experience to say that even in Sudan, remember the day we went to visit your uncle and there was no electricity. Even instead of looking at it in terms of the hair was hot, you know how you'd complain and Majid is thinking the fana is gone off. She's like, hey, look at it, my husband. Good things happened. We were able to get in something more just apart from having the fun, including that is the first time you kissed me. She is tactful, very, very wise and tactful and knows what it takes to touch her heart. And I hope from her, we learn that if you want to win an argument with an opponent who knows much more than you, you use tact, you use evidence. She's using evidence he cannot deny because he was there when they visited his uncle, not her uncle, his uncle. And then he replies, but Samra, do you want a power cut in London? Think of that. Elevators, traffic lights, the trains, chaos and fears. They would write about it in the papers, talk about it on the TV. And in Khartoum, it is an everyday event, another inconvenience, part of the misery of life. Defrosted fridges, fridges become cupboards with the food all soggy and rotting inside. These two people are arguing. I wonder, what do you think? Because when um, uh, Magni is arguing, he's still using logic. He's still saying facts. But Samra is also using logic and using facts. This is now a general question. What do you think of their nature of argument? Whose argument would you rather go by as we... We move to the next slide. A comment? Maria, are you there now? Yes. Say something. <laughs> okay. Maria, I hope I've not ambushed you, but you'll tell us something about this country and how it is, probably how you've had as it is right now. So, uh, Naomi, Sumea, what do you think of the argument of these people? Okay, I think their argument is more convincing. Both sides are convincing, mm -hmm. but uh, we have to think on the basis of their argument. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Samra is uh, thinking of having that living the real life. Mm -hmm. So kind of according to She's explaining the life in London. Mm -hmm. It seems like uh, their life, they are compressed in doing some, not doing some things. Mm -hmm. So I think um, Samra is more convincing mm -hmm. because uh, out of the bad things happening in Sudan, they are mm -hmm. good things. Like that time when they went to visit his uh, Majidi's uncle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, Samra is more convincing. Okay. Sumer? Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. You know, everyone depends on her opinion. For Naomi, mm -hmm. I guess she mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. her plan to a foreign country. Mm -hmm. I guess every Naomi doesn't like to be more developed or she just likes her, her country. Like she's still so loyal. And as well, she's like ready to suffer, but her life, her life but according to me, I'm not ready to suffer. Just I mean, <laughs> this side. I'm like, uh, much this argument is more convincing according to me than according... Samra's. <laughs> that is interesting. Wow, that's the argument. Now, the only thing I noted, eh? the only thing I noted, both of them are entitled to the opinion, and both of them are right, is that Majdi uses very hard language, whereas. Samra uses very soft language. So that Marjorie, when, when Marjorie talks of his home and he says, I can imagine the 
the fridges. Hmm? It has defrosted and it is all, it has rotten food inside. You know, <laughs> just depending on how you are looking at it, probably the way he's arguing is not convincing Samra because he's he's using what we call it. Remember the time when he was thinking that I'm, uh, she, she thinks I'm brilliant and I know I'm brilliant. That pride that he has is bringing his argument out as prideful, whereas Samra comes out as humble. But let's see what happens. Today I want us to finish this. Ah, we have about 10 more slides to go, but they're not, there's not much in them, so we can go on. Do I continue reading? Or oh, somebody wants to take us very fast. Cool. I go on, Sawa. Sometimes he looked at her and felt compassion. Some felt that, yes, she did not belong here. Look at the little curls at the nape of her neck, dry now and light, not moist with sweats, and thought that she was meant for brilliant sunsets and thin cotton dresses. I want you now to see from their argument, now Magdi is observing his wife and what he is seeing and the changes he thought she should have accepted. So sometimes he'd look at her and feel compassion. Felt that, yes, she did not belong here, that is in London. Looked at the little curls at the nape of her neck, dry now and light, not moist with sweat. Remember, they were moist with sweat the day she met her. He met her for the first time when they were on the rebellion, when they were in the riot. So he's now comparing those times. This is a vivid description. And thought that she was meant for brilliant sunset and thin cotton dresses. Her, you know, she's not supposed to be putting on the, the toad and, and those long dresses. That is what he's thinking. She should change. She should change to where we are right now. Her small teeth made a strip, made to strip the hard the hard husk of sugarcane. In other words, surely her teeth should not be eating sugarcane. Those sugarcane, they're so hard back at home. Her dimples for friends and neighbors. Surely she should remove this thing that is covering her head so that people can see her dimples. Beautiful. He could see her in idle conversation, weaving the strands of gossip with a friend, passing the time in the shade of palm trees and bougainvilleas in a place where the hours were long. So he's trying to come to her side. His eyes are opening. Most times, though, he could not understand how she was not excited by the opportunities in their new life, the, the new life held. How could she admire the civilized way that people went about their business here, their efficiency and decencies, ambulances and fire engines that never let anyone down, the way a check could slide through the wedge of the wall and crisp cash emerge? These things impressed her, but not for long. She exclaimed at how the pigeons and the ducks in the parks were left unmolested. No one captured them to eat them. <laughs> oh my, but instead of enjoying their beauty, she brooded over how poor her own people were. He's in shock. These are now called conflicts. The conflicts that are going on inside a Majdi. He's trying to understand his wife that she has come to this new city. Why can she dress like these people in very light clothes? Why can she remove this, this attire that is covering her beautiful face so that people can see her? But then I can see her also talking and enjoying gossip with a friend here and there. How come she's not seeing how civilized we are? That here, everything is efficient. You're sick, there's an ambulance. There's a fire, the fire engine comes. You need money. You just put in the check, through a, the check through a wall and the money comes. You don't need to line up or anything like that. How come these things are not impressing her for long? When she's seeing pigeons and ducks, why are people not eating them? Why are they left there? In other words, can she see that they're supposed to be there for decoration? She's just thinking about her own poor people. In other words, all that beauty that Samra sees does not change deep down what she is. So what I want us to note in this page are the conflicts and the feelings he has for her. He loves her. He's compassionate towards her, but he's also critical towards her. I, I repeat, he loves her. He's loving. He's critical. He's compassionate. Okay? And now he's trying to understand, but the conflict is going on. So in case you are asked, what are the conflicts going on inside Majdi towards his wife, then these are the things that you can pick out. That she is come to a new place, but she's not changing. And reasons being the ones that he has given on this page. 
I am finishing the reading. He began to think of our homesickness as perverse. Now look at this. Look at the words in red. Please, if you have a pen, I want you to note these words in red. I'll try to read it a bit slowly. Look at the words he's, cho he's chosen. He was having, he had conflicts. But now as he's continuing, he's forming an attitude. So this page has his, as he's picking out what he's missing out, he's forming an attitude. Please note the word attitude. So he begins to think of our homesickness as perverse, from the word perversion. Her reluctance wholeheartedly to embrace their new life as an intransigence. Intransigence. And if somebody could also check them, it would be very nice, but please note them down. He began to feel bored by her nostalgia. Bored by her nostalgia. In other words, when she starts thinking about home, he is now bored. Her inability to change and to initiate a new life for herself. Homesickness was blocking her progress. Homesickness was blocking her progress, blinding her to all the benefits she could gain, blinding her. There were so many choices, so many new doors, and yet she was stuck to her past, adoring Sudan and missing out on the present. If you are asked, what is the relevance of the title? Here we are now seeing the words all along, we've seen what she's missing out on, but here now, she's missing out on the presence. She's stuck. Had he, in the time he had spent in London, met Sudanese women who blossomed in their new surroundings, he had seen them in tight trousers that they would not dare wear back home, playing with light cigarettes in their hands. And though he did not expect or really want her to do exactly these things, he was disappointed that she did not capture that same spirit and instead, seems shyer, more reserved than ever was in Khartoum. She wanted to wear her top to cover her hair and he would say, no, no, not here. I don't want us to be associated with fanatics and backwardness. Remember, I told you that as he's observing his wife, even though he has conflicts, but the words he's using, the change modernity has made in him, he's now completely modern that all these things that Samra is doing, how she is dressing, her inability to change, he's looking at it as fanatics and backwardness. This is the effect of modernity. The effect of modernity. That she's missing out on changing her dressing. She's missing out on accepting the new things that they're enjoying. Including, he's saying that I don't want her to, to put on light trousers. I really don't want her to light cigarettes. But at least let her change. She's missing out. Have we understood this, this, uh, this paragraph? Yes. Yes, because this, this brings out the aspect of missing out, the title. And then what changes takes place? What, what, okay, the question there is covered, eh? It is frightening to come home at the end of the day. And now he's still thinking of how this woman is just changing. What is happening to her? So he says, it is frightening to come home at the end of the day and find your wife sitting, one, just sitting in her dressing gown and her hair uncombed just as you left her in the morning. The excitement of tourism disappeared. Number two, she who checks her reflection in every mirror, who for you sends her hair with sandalwood, Deep still in call to wipe the rims of her eyes. You find her sitting and the whole place is untouched. No smell of cooking. The bed is unmade. Mug stained with tea. The remaining few flecks of cereal swollen in their bowl. She is silent. Looks at you as if you don't exist. Does not yield or soften under your touch. Stroke her hair. Rub her hands. Probe for the right words. The words she wants to hear. Talk of jasmine scented gardens, of a wedding dance, of the Nile breaking its banks until she can cry. In other words, the changes that have taken place in Samra is that her joy has completely gone. She is now depressed by being in London. She wakes up in the morning, up to evening, she's in her dressing gown, 
She does not comb her hair. She does not touch her breakfast. She does not wash the dishes that are dirty. She does not clean the, the room. She does not cook. She is silent. She does not talk to him. Even when he touches her and says nice words, she does not respond. She is just silent. That is the change that has taken place. Please note that under the theme of change. Change. She has completely changed. And then for days afterwards, as Majdi put his key in the lock, as he turned it, he would brace himself for the same sin. He would fear a recurrence. He had been happy that day while she sat at home with a frozen heart. He had glimpsed a modern success, a slight breakthrough in his work. In other words, something nice happened to him that day. But when he comes home, oh my, the lady will not talk. A paper he had been looking for, a paper written five years ago in his same area of work was located in another library. And he had gone there to that college on the other side of London, an event in itself, for he was always at the library or using the mainframe computers, seeing now this is all telling us how he has been modernized. Now he's using computers. His paper can be found in another library. And so he had found it, photocopied it, warmed it to his familiar notation and traveled back full of appreciation for that meticulous body of knowledge. Please let us note Majdi's attitude towards himself. He is so prideful that he has found a paper that he wrote and is looking at it and is thinking meticulous means there is absolutely no mistake. It is perfect. That is how he's looking at himself. So meticulous body of knowledge the technology that enabled one to locate written materials. And this is what he says, we are centuries behind, he would tell her later. In things like that, we are too far behind ever to catch up. And while she had sat in a dressing gown, immobile, ignoring hunger and thirst, he had entered the mind of that other mathematician, following his logic. And, and this is a science class. So I want you to follow this carefully, physicists, the physics, physics teachers, <laughs> physics students. This is now Majdi. Hmm? Remember, he has studied topology. So he says, and while she sat in a dressing gown, immobile, ignoring hunger and thirst, he had entered the mind of other mathematician, followed his logic, and, and when finding an error, the subscript for lambda should have been T1 and not T. This is like now computer language. A typing error or a more serious slip from the writer, he had infused with a sense of pleasure so that when he knelt next to her and asked, what is wrong? What has happened? The formula with these phi's and gammas and lambdas are frolic, still frolicked in his brain. And the idea occurred to him that her name, if he ignored its real Arabic meaning, sounded just like these Greek letters, these enigmatic variables with their soft shapes and gentle curves, alpha, lambda, sigma, beta, samra. <laughs> In other words, this man is so caught up in his being modernized. He is so caught up in the education that he has got that now he's interpreting everything from the angle of his education. And he's believed that in Sudan, there are so much centuries behind that she will not even understand what he's saying. And he decides that even the person who typed this thing made a mistake. I think I can correct them. And now finally he decides, and I think this is supposed to be some humor, that even my wife's name sounds like the study of what I'm doing. So my question is, did she then now become an object of his study? Because all along he seems to have been studying her. Remember, he was studying topology. Topology is understanding systems. You put this together, you put this together until it makes sense. So now he's actually been studying her. What does that tell us about him? Contrast as a theme, contrast. Contrasting Sudan and contrasting London. There is use of vivid description. And then in terms of character trait, he is, he is he's, I would say he's meticulous. Please write that one down. You can find out what it means. He himself is meticulous. He will discover every small mistake Wherever it is, he is meticulous. 
And of course, he's observant. He is observant. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. What time is it? 12.30. And we have about, can I summarize them? Yes, we are almost done. We're almost done. It's we are on slide 43, 39. We're almost done with the book. Oh, yeah. And you're actually reading it. So let me take the reading. He proposed a practical solution to a problem. Remember, this guy is a scientist. So this wife of mine, I think there is a scientific solution. <laughs> she must do something with herself. She's too idle. And she's not allowed to work because she didn't have a permit. Then she must study. So he decides already her English is good. So word processing is not a problem. She can actually type his thesis for him when he's doing his PhD program. So he was so enthusiastic that he got a friend of his who had just come in, recently traveled to Tunisia for a holiday and had come back and cased in her caftans and shorts. So in other words, I want to bring Samra, some, a lady she can identify with to teach her. So the teacher was teaching Samra so that at least she can do something. She gets papers for work. But now here is what she did. The teacher told, gushed at Samra. Gushed, you know, you say it powerfully. You must be so relieved that you are here. All that war and famine back home, you must be relieved that you are not there now. From such a woman, Samra recoiled and like a spoiled stubborn child refused to continue with the course. That woman just spoiled everything by mentioning that back home we have war and famine and that you should be happy to be in London, that is where the, 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 the reading stopped. So his proposed practical solution did not work. He said it was practical, but it, it did not work because Samra is very critical, character trait. She is critical. Note that. Out of Suspicion, expiration, sorry, <laughs> exasperation. Maggie suggested that he should go home for a few months. He says, hey, enough is enough. I can't take it anymore. Please, Samra, just go home. He winced as he saw her try to hide the eagerness in her voice. Of course, she was happy, but she's trying to hide. So she says, yes, that would be nice. But he saw that she was very excited. And the polite question she asked, would the ticket be expensive? Remember, this is a very wise lady. She doesn't want to make it look like she has forced him to take her home. So she's using words just to test the waters. At you, would the ticket be expensive? Would you be okay when you remain on your home? Then she left easily, so easily, as if she never truly arrived, never left her roots. Then she just left back to Sudan like she had not been to London. Now, note this last. This last really is very, very important. This last... um. Uh, paragraph, the next paragraph you're reading. Without her, it suddenly started to feel like the year her, he had spent alone in London before they arrived. So did she have impact on him? Certainly. The days drifting together, no reason to come home in the evening, all around him too much quietude. Without her, he was not sure how to organize his day. Missing out. Remember, missing out. <laughs> To work at home or at the library, to work late at night or wake up early in the morning, is now confused. He did not, he knew it did not matter either way. But that early sparkle of liberty, which had characterized the first day of her absence, that feeling of relief of the responsibility shed, soon faded away and the freedom hung around him, stale and heavy. He's now missing out on her. He's missing out on his routine that she had established. He's missing out on her presence when he comes back late. He's missing out on an organized day because he doesn't know, should I work at home? Should I work in the library? He is missing out on her presence. And finally, his life becomes stale and heavy. It seems she was actually the reason he had even the reason the, the, the thoughts that he had, her presence. So while Samra was away, London became more familiar to him. He thought of it as his new home, 
and as if it was the city of response, he could feel it softening around him, becoming genial in its age, the summers getting hotter and hotter, a new humid heat sticky and like the dry burning of the desert in London. All of a sudden, when Samra leaves, please get this, please get this. When Samra leaves, all that beauty that Magdi was seeing in London seems to fade. And it is described here. Before, he had to argue with her and prove to her that London is good. But now here is the reality of London. The summers are getting hotter. The new humid heat sticky. And like the burning, people are now, it's sticking. Now, now sticky. People feel the streets, the parks, the population explosion as if the season of imprisonment was over and they were now let loose. Look at how now he's seeing it negatively. It's now summer. So people have come out from the winter that he was enjoying. They lay immobile on towels spread on the grass. People are sleeping everywhere. That, that they drive in cars without roofs, spilled out of cafes in the pavements. Look at how he has changed his language now about London. Before, he was speaking of London is the perfect place. But now his language spilled out. You know, in the, in, in the caves. Beggars squatted around the stations, third world style. Now he's seeing the real London. It's like third world style. The sight of the beggars judged him. He could not look at them in the face. He could not give them money. It did not look right or feel right that white people should be poor. The reality hits our friend Majdi that probably there's no much different. The white people can also be poor. It was shameful that they were homeless and begging. It was unnatural that he was better off than them. Look at that. It was unnatural that they were be he was better off than them. Is he a lesser human being? He had a faint memory of discovering that in Europe, begging was illegal. The information incredible to him or inspiring had been in his uh, mind part of the magic, magic of the Western world, a part where everyone's livelihood was so guaranteed that begging could be considered a crime. All of a sudden, in short, <laughs> the reality hits him that even in London, just like in his own country, people can be poor, people can be many in the street. You know, all that is happening. And he had once told Samra that this country chips away one's faith but he began to see that it chips away indiscriminately at all faith, even faith in itself. He no longer has faith in the country. And as it accepted him, his admiration for it to stabilize, his faith in it was wavered. It was no longer enough as it had once been, that he was here, that he was privileged to walk London streets, smell the books of its library, feast his eyes on its new shining cars. He would walk on wet roads that never flooded and realize that, he would never know what it would be like to say, my ancestors built this. My grandfather borrowed a book from this library. London held something that could never be his, that was impossible to aspire to. His mother found him, her voice loud over the bustle of the central police office. Why did you send Samra back for a holiday so soon? Is anything wrong between you? In short, in short, he realized London can never be home. Even if I like it so much, London can never be home. There is nothing I can trace my ancestral ancestries to. Even in this library, he was taken aback. No, of course not. Marrying Samra had helped him feel settled and comfortable, well-fed and looked after. He had liked working late into the night, her keeping her company, the click of the spoon as she stirred her sugar in tea, the chiming of her bangles, her movement when she stood up to pray, did she complain about anything? No, his mother's voice was casual. She just mentioned that you don't pray. <laughs> oh no, he could not think of a reply. The corridor of the hostel was empty. He stared at the vending machine which sold chocolates and drinks. Samra had been fascinated by this machine. She had tried to get it to work with Sudanese coins. He actually missed her. Okay. Uh-huh. And in short, we are saying, <laughs> we are saying that he told his mother that he wanted to finish his PhD. And the mother there is trying to manipulate him or she's saying the truth. He says, how can you leave me all along in my old age? And he smiles and he says, but my brothers are there in Khartoum, mom. They can still take care of you. For me, I want to stay here in London. And then his mother sighed, 
First, he had threatened to abandon his studies, return without a degree. Now he was threatening the opposite. He had married him off so that you drift, not drift away. And that did not even work. And then she says, he says, I can't decide my future on speculations. In spite of what mom is saying, I can't decide my future on speculation. That is topology. That is what he had studied. And um, this is the last slide. Who wants to read the last paragraph for us, as we call it a day? The last paragraph. Are you there or you have gone for lunch? We are there. Okay. One okay, person, let me read first. please go ahead. Back in his room, Majdi noticed the silence. The floor looked strangely larger. Samra had folded her prayer mat and put it away in her side of the cup cupboard. She had not needed to take with to take it with her. In her tomb, there were plenty of other mats, mats with one faded patches in those places where, where, where people pressed their forehead and stood with wet feet. Majdi opened the cupboard and touched the smooth velvet material. It stirred, it stirred in him a childish sense of exclusion, of being left out like a pleasure he had denied himself and now forgotten the reason why she had held the day up with pegs, not only her day but his but his two five pegs and now morning billowed in into afternoon into night and marked. Aha. In short, he's missing out. Her presence reminded him that he used to pray. He doesn't pray anymore. So as the book ends and leaves us in suspense, we know that Majdi, somebody has lost his life and finally missing out. He's missing out on her. He's missing out on his prayers. He's missing out on his past. And now all of a sudden his life has just gone on, boring, nothing to look forward to. And that brings us to the end of the text. Any comments as we close? Missing out is based on Majdi and Samra. Is that what? Or it's based on oh, missing yeah. out. The topic is it based on Samra or Majdi alone, or both of them? All of depending them. on the all on everybody who missed out somebody, because normally a topic that the, the, the title covers everything. So is Sam Sandy, Naomi? Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. He is missed out on um who? On 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 his um I mean both of them, sorry, I was a bit distracted. Both of them are actually missing out on each other. Both of them are missing out on their country and what happened there, except that we do not see Samra missing out a lot on what happened in London but she appreciated it. So the topic covers everything. Any other question or observation? I'd like to comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the story itself, it's more applicable to us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a wonderful story for mm -hmm. us teens. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to say that um, Sandra is a good, uh, she's a good, uh, okay, in Kiselin to Sema Mewa Kilisha, the teens of today, mm -hmm. we think that some things are good, but once you experience them, mm -hmm. once the fun is over, like you feel nothing about them. We have to go back from where we, what we were, where we came from. And mm -hmm. that's a lesson that uh, Majdi had that. Mm -hmm. um, Without some people in our lives, mm -hmm. some things would make sense. Like for him, mm -hmm. he saw that London was everything. But mm -hmm. at the end of it, mm -hmm. without Sandra, mm -hmm. of which at the first time he wasn't appreciative of his presence uh, in his life, mm -hmm. later he gets to see that she played an important role and that... Mm -hmm. I've lost you. Hmm. 
Oh, we have lost uh, Naomi briefly. Okay. There's there's some something with the network we can't hear, but I've appreciated that that we have learned something that we must appreciate. Mm -hmm. Sumaya? So can we say that the first, the right of this story mainly is based on saying people should be loyal to their country. I think that seems to be what he's saying, but then again, because it is lit, it is literature, it is also left to us to pick the good things and leave out what we think is bad. But he's trying to say that we should not despise our culture. It's just that we are not told uh, clearly when Sam, Samra went back home, did she implement what she learned? Did she try to bring some change? We also left not to know whether that has come out. But it's up to us to learn the good things and leave out what is bad. But he's also saying that uh, some of the culture we might despise are not bad, are not bad. We just need to put them in context. In other words, you can be in London and still uphold some of your traditions that are good and also leave the ones that you think that are stifling you. You can also enjoy modern things that uh, are good and help us move on with lives. So it's open to our interpretation. Yes. I was praying that Maria would say something before we log out. Okay. Uh, Tisha, thank you for mm -hmm. taking out your time to yeah. take us through the book. Thank uh, you. Secondly, I apologize for joining late. Okay. Actually, I think there is a bit confusion because some lesson are going on. Mm -hmm. I think there is for chemistry and physics. Mm -hmm. That was the reason. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the book, I will agree with Naomi. It is mostly talking to us, the teenagers. Mm -hmm. How important it is that it is good you all on to what you believe, provided mm -hmm. it is something mm -hmm. correct and it is being supported by the norm of your society. For example, mm -hmm. Samra stood mm -hmm. her ground. Mm -hmm. She may not raise mm -hmm. the life in London, because that is not a lifestyle. Maybe lifestyle of Udiwa Rosa, and she's not used to it. Mm -hmm. And also, the mm -hmm. fact that Mark seem not to bother about the prayer style, but Samra, that is what she has been doing since she, she maybe she was a shell. Mm -hmm. So, that really touches me that it's good to mm -hmm. to hold on to what you believe provided you know it's something that is good and it is acceptable in the society thank you thank you so much and that brings us to the end of this book so probably i'll just send a question you can try while you are at home thank you for your attentiveness and your contribution